Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to perform match filtering in GNU Octave. So a match filter is an optimum filter that is giving you the maximized signal to noise ratio at its output when there's additive stochastic noise present. So um, imagine the case that you for example receive a signal and you know what uh, you, uh, you will receive for example a certain pulse and, but it's corrupted by noise and you maybe cannot see in the time domain where the pulse is beginning and where it stops or even if there's a, a signal present. And that is where this match filtering operation comes into the game. It will give you a maximized signal to noise ratio at its output so that you can see, hey, inside my noisy signal, there is my um, desired signal. As the name is already indicating, match filtering means that it's a filter matched to the signal that you expect. So you know the pulse shape or the pulse, per pulse parameters, but you don't know when the signal arrives or if the signal is present. And um, this information will give you the matched filter. And mathematically, it's quite easy. A matched filter is the transmit signal waveform, time reversed, and if it's a complex signal, you have also to conjugate complex the, the filter coefficient. So it's a qu quite easy operation. And uh, what you're doing then is just taking your, your matched filter taps and uh, filter it or convolve it with your received signal. And at the point where your, your filter, uh, where your desired signal is maybe hidden inside the noise, you will see a peak. And then you know, okay, hey, my signal is present and you can extract it. Commonly, match filtering is used in radar um, signal processing to detect weak target echoes or also um, in communications um, uh, signal processing to detect if a, signal, a certain signal is present. Also remember the case that you receive a lot of signals and you just want to know, hey, inside that bunch of signals is there maybe my desired signal? So this is what the match filter can do for you. So let's directly head over to our workspace and perform a practical example to show you what you, for example, can do with the mesh filter operation. As usual, we start with the certain sampling frequency because we're in the digital domain, let's say eight kilohertz. And we're not um, going to use a, um, just a standard pulse. We, we, we use a pulse that is linearly frequency modulated. So a chirp signal. And as you know, we need uh, a pulse duration, let's say one second, so our signal has a, a duration of one second, our desired signal. And because it's a chirp, it will linearly increase its frequency from a start frequency to up to a stop frequency. In this example, we say we generate a pulse that has a duration of one second and it will increase its frequency over this one second, starting from 400 Hertz to 500 hertz. To generate our signal, we need a time vector, which starts at zero. Each sample is divided, uh, is spaced by the inverse of the sampling frequency. And we are going up to our pulse duration of one second. And we subtract one sample, so minus one divided by sampling frequency to get an even signal. So we start at zero and stop at n minus one. And then we generate our signal our chirp, so it's sinus from two times pi times, and then f start times t. This would be a normal um, continuous wave. And now we bring in the linear frequency modulation. So we are spanning a bandwidth from f start to f stop. So we subtract f stop minus f start to get the bandwidth of 100 hertz, 500 minus 400 and then divided by two times the on time. Don't care about the math here. Um, I will give you the link for the chirp math in the description below of the video. And then times t to the power of two. So now we have created as a pulse x with a linear frequency modulation starting from 400 going up to 500. And Let's fire it up just to see if we've made any errors. Okay, fine. So now um, we um, assume the case that we are sampling a signal, let's say for 2.5 seconds. And inside this signal, at some point, 
our generated and desired signal X will arise but we don't know when we hope it's there but it's um, covered by noise. This is the scenario that we're now going to implement. So we generate a, a vector Y, which contains our signal X, but also a lot of noise. And we don't know when our signal X starts and when it stops. And we want to use the matched filter to see if our signal X is inside our received signal Y. So let's say we generate a signal with the length of 2.5 seconds. Just to mention to transform or to come from time to a number of samples it's always the time in this case 2.5 seconds times the sampling frequency giving you the overall number of samples so and let's say inside our signal y at some point we we um, want to uh, have our our designed pulse x let's say after one second we want that our pulse x will start. So it's one second times sampling frequency plus one, plus one, and then we place our signal X there times X. So, and now let's plot it that you can uh, follow what we, what we just did here. Sorry, this was the wrong plot Y. So we plot our signal Y. Okay, I will show it to you. Just one second. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm quite new to OBS. So, where is, yeah, here it is. So, here is the signal Y that we've created. Now you maybe can follow what, what my intention is. So we have a signal with an overall duration of, um, let's say 20,000 samples or 2.5 uh, seconds. And at some point here, which is, corresponds to one second, our generated signal X starts and it stops after its duration, which is also one second. So. Uh, our signal starts at one second and stops at two seconds or 60,000 sounds and Now it's easy if we would receive the signal we can determine hey here the pulse begins here the pulse starts uh, here the pulse starts and here the pulse ends but uh, If there's additive noise present then the the situation will change and this is what I will show you now So let's add noise to this signal here and have a look what will happen so we are going back to our workspace. Okay, so now let's um, add noise to our signal. I will call it YN for Y noise, plus random noise with the size of Y. And the amplitude of the noise will be one. Yeah. And now let's plot this also to see what changed. But we will use a subplot to compare both plots. So we plot our noise free signal. And again, inside this noise free signal Y, our desired signal X is located at some arbitrary point. In, in, in this scenario, it, the pulse will begin at one second and stop after two seconds. And so now we will also plot our noisy signal and let's fire it up okay and i will show it to you and here it is so in the upper plot you can see our noise free signal after one second our pulse will arrive and it will stop after uh, time two seconds because we've designed a linearly frequency modulated pulse with a duration of one second and then we've added noise to the signal and now it's quite hard to see if our signal X is still present inside what we have received and we maybe can slightly assume that the average amplitude or power is, a sli is slightly higher at where we would our exp um, pulse expect but 
actually we're not able to to see if there's a signal present our desired signal present or not and this is exactly where the match filter operation comes in so we now convolve our noisy signal or filter our noisy signal with our match filter and then what we would expect is a peak where our desired signal x is located and so yeah let's head over to our workspace and perform exactly this operation so so first let's create the matched filter xmf and as i already told you the matched filter is matched to our transmit signal mathematically it's a time reversed and conjugate complex copy of our transmit signal. So let's time reverse it by using flip LR X. And we now have a real signal, so we actually don't need the conjugate complex um, operation, but let's do it just to, to, to be coherent with the math. And now let's filter our noisy signal with our matched filter and see what, what will be the output. To, so we create a filter output, yf, and we use the filter operation. And the filter command expects three inputs. So the first input will be our matched filter coefficients, xmf. Second will be a one, because if we have a uh, recursive filter, then we would um, include our um, coefficients here. but we only have an, a finite impulse response filter, so it's a one. And then we pass our noisy signal to the filter. So that's all. XMF is our generated matched filter coefficients and we apply our matched filter to our noisy signal YN. And now let's plot the whole scene again. I will use our old subplot here and at the third row, with the matched filter output. So, and this will be subplot 2.1.3. Oh, sorry. Three rows, one column, three rows, one column, three rows, one column, and then it's here number one, row number two, and row number three. And then we plot our filter output. Why? Oh, we have an error here and it's, oh, there was an I missing at f the flip command. So, and here it is, I will show it to you. So, what do we have here? The first row, um, as mentioned, is our noise-free signal with our desired pulse in it. Row number two is giving us the received signal, so the, which is the noisy signal corrupted by that much noise that we cannot see where our desired signal starts and where it stops, or if it is even in it. And then we have applied the matched filter to our noisy signal. And what we can see here is that we get a clear peak at um, the sample index 16,000. And this is exactly where our um, desired signal X stops. This is the, the, the falling edge of our pulse, of our desired pulse. Um, so maybe you might, might ask, hey, why is this peak not at the beginning where our pulse will begin? This is because of the math of the convolution. I will link you, uh, the, I will give you a link in the description below of this video. But we know how long our pulse is because it's the matched filter. So we, we, we expect a certain signal and we now know, hey, our signal is present because we have a strong peak here, a strong correlation peak. And this peak is indicating us the falling edge. So the, the end of our pulse, we know how long the pulse is. Then we can also, without any problem, determine where the beginning of our pulse is. And that is what we will do now, just to, um, make sure it works. So, um, so now let's just um, identify the, the, the sample index of the maximum that we just saw. 
at the match filter output. So it's yf and we want to get the maximum of that function and ind will give us the index, so the sample index, in this case 16,000 and also value, but we're not interested in value. So um, let's fire it up. And we can see our maximum index is at 16,000. And if we now subtract from our maximum index, our length of the match filter, length MF, XMF, this will give us the starting point of our desired signal. It's 8,000 and this is exactly what we have designed because we, we said, okay, hey, we want to have a signal starting at one second and one second times sampling frequency is exactly 8000. We have added here plus one because we started zero. And so now we have um, demonstrated that we are able to detect the desired signal, which is completely covered by noise. We can also increase our, our noise power, for example, um, to two times the, the, the amplitude of the original signal. And as you can see, we still estimate the correct rising edge point of our filter signal and we can all uh, of our desired signal and we can have a look at the match filter output just to see that we still have a strong correlation peak and here it is we still have a strong correlation peak at index 16000 so the point where our pulse stops and with the knowledge of the length of our pulse we still can um, determine where the beginning of our pulse is located. In this case, as um, calculated as index 8000. So this is basically the matched filter operation. A very powerful tool to determine if a signal, a desired well-known signal is present. So you know the parameters of the signal, but you don't know when it will arrive and you don't know if it's present inside what you receive. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. We will see us next time. Bye bye.